what's up Leo and welcome to your July 2020 creativity tarot reading. My name is Kaylee Jean and welcome to my channel. I record these readings for artists, entrepreneurs, and anyone who is working on their personal growth, self-expression, or spirituality in any form. So if those areas of life are important for you right now, I encourage you to go ahead and keep watching. I also want to say really quickly that you can use these readings for your sun, moon, or your rising sign, and it's also possible sometimes they don't resonate, particularly in the beginning of the month. So if that's the case for you, I encourage you to come back to this video at the end of July and see maybe what themes, images, symbols, or connections you may feel did relate to your life experience, because that's often the feedback that I get. <laughs> All right, Leo, I want to get into your channel messages. So while I was just kind of settling in and connecting to your energy for July, I had this feeling like, I don't know if you've experienced that sense of when you're about to leave the house for a big trip and you're just kind of really trying to get everything together and you're like double, triple checking that you have your passport, you are throwing things into suitcases and then when you walk through a doorway it's like a suitcase suitcase bumps into the doorway a little bit and it just can feel a little bit like chaotic um that was what was coming through for you guys so i don't know if you are specifically planning any travel leo that could be the case for some of you it could also be that you're entering into a new journey in some way in your life. And I feel like the first steps of that journey may feel a little chaotic to you. Or if it's a personal growth thing, you could feel like you are making a couple missteps at this time. And this could be something that you felt like a little bit from June as well. Um, but it feels to me like there's like this sense of a little tiny bit of a rocky start to something. But then I was shown almost like a boat leaving a bay and the water is really kind of wild and crazy and there's this, you know, sense of just big waves and stuff. But then once the boat gets out into the open ocean, it's like the clouds part and there's this peacefulness um, that the boat like goes into. So that was the end of the meditation. And honestly, I feel like for you, Leo, this is just, I think, meant to give you permission to be a little bit gentler on yourself right now. If you are trying something new or if you are planning something big or if you are stumbling through something that you're doing for the first time, don't hold it against yourself if there are some challenges or, you know, maybe you just have to rethink some things. But the point is not to hold this space within yourself that feels rigid, right? You're not meant to be rigid with yourself and demanding perfection within yourself right now. You, what you are meant to do is just kind of be very gentle and self-loving, but persistent on your path, okay? Don't let any little potential obstacles or, or missteps, mistakes, don't let them throw you off completely because I do feel that what you're doing right now matters. It's just there's a little bit of a rocky start and adjustments that are going to be made. So that's all that I get from the meditation. Let's take a look at your cards.
So let's take a look here. So we've got the lion. Wow, so beautiful for a Leo, right? And we've got the peacock. Wow. Wow, wow. That's beautiful. So the first word that comes to my mind, and it's just screaming um, out for you, Leo, is dignity. And I feel like this concept of dignity is just comes through so strongly with both of these um, cards and, and the way that both of these creatures look. So, of course, you know, with the lion representing you and your strength and your personal power, Leo, this is a really important reading for you. I feel like this card is reminding you of your strength. It's reminding you of your innate dignity and sovereignty as an individual. And I think one of the things that we can forget a lot of times, especially when we are maybe struggling a little bit or we are trying to bring something into manifestation and it's taking a little while or um, if we are second guessing ourselves in any way, I think the concept of dignity really helps because we can be someone who has maybe come from difficult circumstances, right? Like you could have been a single parent, for example, um, or you could have been somebody who grew up with like, um, I don't want to suggest like abuse or anything like that, but there could be like, everybody has their challenges, I guess is my point here with this card. And having that sense of personal dignity is like having that ability to look at your life situation and look at the choices that you've made and actually be not like not overly prideful but genuinely proud of yourself and knowing that if you sacrificed a lot to do something in your life and it was very difficult for you to do that you can have strength in that you can find strength in that you can find a reason to hold your head high and recognize that yeah maybe you haven't had a perfect life maybe you haven't been given everything to help you succeed maybe you still have a ways to go in certain ways but there's this deeper sense of self-respect that comes from acknowledging your competence in life and your sense of well, you know, I've I made choices and then I dealt with the consequences of those choices and you know, I've I've always been able to pull myself back up. I've always been able to, you know, create a better situation for myself over time. So, that's kind of the energy that I get here is like a lot of strength radiating from me, Leo, and a lot of like personal self-respect. Um and the peacock energy that's crossing you, this creature looks also kind of solemn the peacock and in this situation because it's your influence card i want to say that um i want to say that like when i look at these this month is going to require some quiet self-assurance from you you don't have to prove anything to anyone leo like that's that's what i get from these cards is you are at this time, who you are and what you do is enough. I just want to say that again, like who you are and what you do in life is way more than enough. Like you are the best that you can be at this time, given the influences and the circumstances that you've experienced. And you're always working to create more um, beneficence in your life or to uplift yourself and other people. So I feel like you don't have anything to prove when I'm looking at this. And, and I'm specifically reading for the people who are coming to this video, right? Because not everybody and not every Leo in the world is going to see this video. So this is about you. Like, Leo, this is a message to you that you are enough and that you are the answer, that you have the power and the sovereignty to acknowledge and validate yourself and to create the life that you want. And so that's the, the biggest message here. So let's take a look at your cards. Four of Swords, Five of Pentacles, the Tower, and the Nine of Pentacles, Page of Swords, Ace of Cups, Seven of Swords, and Seven of Cups. Interesting. So this reading kind of makes sense to me. I'm also going to draw your Surrender Oracle card. Leo, Leo, Leo. Leo. 
this reading makes sense to me with some of the energy that I was picking up. Like even how remember I was describing in the meditation, it's like people trying to get out the door and they're sort of like bumping into things and they're just, um, it's kind of like a weird start to something. We have the um, five of pentacles, which is showing two people kind of like walking away from something. And we also have the four of swords. So we do have this um, lunar eclipse in Capricorn, which is symbolically for you, Leo, that, um, so I'm trying to crack my back here. <laughs> it just feels good. Um, symbolically, that's going to fall in your sixth house. So basically, when you have um, a lunar eclipse in your sixth house, symbolically, um, this can point to um, transformations either when it comes to your like daily life and your lifestyle, also potentially with health and matters of health, um, and also with work and specifically the effect that our work has on us somatically. And what I mean by that is, you know, if your work stresses you out, how does that play out in your body? right? Like that's kind of like the realm of the sixth house is it's not only work and it's not only health, but it's how our lifestyle and our daily choices come together and impact the physical body tissues. So for you, you have two cards that have to do with the need to really look at health when we see these two cards coming up in the first week of July. So what I'm going to recommend, because both of these cards have connotations with, you know, potential illness or potential needing to relax, needing to get some time out, needing to um, just rest, honestly. Like sometimes the Four of Swords has that connotation of like, okay, the body is a little overstressed. Um, you might be even just overstressed when it comes to anxiety, if you're listening to a lot of news, that can be something that gets the, you know, the wheels turning and it can jump uh, cortisol and adrenaline and it can make the body, you know, constantly in this fight or flight state, which isn't really helpful to our overall health and well-being, especially over time. Stress is one of the most chronically aging factors for our physical body. So the more stressed we are chronically over time, the worse it is for our joints, and the worse it is for our hormones, um, it, the worse it is for so many different elements of the body. So what I want to say here, Leo, is like in the first week of July, it could be really important for you to reduce your stress in whatever way that you can. If you are a Leo and you are feeling a little stressed right now, it's normal for you to feel that, but just listen to your body is really like the message that I get. So get some more sleep. If you're not sleeping enough, you need to get enough sleep that's right for your body, the right amount for you. Um, also, you will need to eat the foods that make you feel strong. Um, I, I do see this as being maybe a time of lighter exercise, like maybe walking. If you are a Leo who has the ability to walk outside or maybe um, if you have the ability to um, even use like a treadmill. I see walking potentially, um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, hard. It doesn't have to be extreme or anything like that, but just a little bit of movement, if that's possible for you. Um, I see that as being useful, but then I also just see like rest and more napping and just kind of as much as you can fit like more peace and less stress into your lifestyle. So that's your job. <laughs> that's your job in the first week of July is really, really just to take care of you. The second week we have the Tower and the Nine of Pentacles. So the Nine of Pentacles is a card of independence, specifically financial independence. Um, and it's also a card of mastery, I want to say. It's one of my favorite cards and it's the um, card that I actually named my business after, so it's a great card. However, the Tower next to it can show this sense of like something being, um, I don't know why, but like the word that's coming into my mind right now is like evaporated, but I don't think that's the right word. But I see something here about something being sort of pushed um, into manifestation or something being, you know, surprising. We have with the tower, we have this element of being pushed out maybe of an old pattern. So there could be something going on in the, um, second week of July that has to do with maybe being pushed into a situation where you have more independence somehow. Um, you could be moving 
some of you. Uh, you could be separating from a relationship, some of you, um, if that is relevant and if that's something, you know, that's potentially on the horizon for you already. I wouldn't say that it's like going to be the thing that happens for all Leos or anything like that, but that is one potential interpretation because there's two people here and then there's one person here. So it's like a break from a pattern that has the fortunate end result of giving you more independence, but the way that that comes about could be a little jarring. Um, it could be as well um, just needing to get out of the house. Like for some of you, like you, if you have a significant other, you might be like, okay, you know what? I know coronavirus is going on, but I am allowed to fly or I am allowed to travel a little bit right now. So we just need to go. We just need to go somewhere. Like it could be something like that as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be like a negative thing. It could be that you guys are just like, I need to get out of the house and the tower here represents the house. And it's like pronto, we got to get out of here. And then, but the nine of pentacles is a card of stability. It's a card of, um, support as well like internally generated support and strength so i'm not worried about you there leo um i do think that it's more of a transition time that you're going through and you know we all are going through major transitions right now 2020 is one of the most transformational years we've had <laughs> ever as a species i think so um let's go to the third week of july this is where we start to see more of that kind of tender new beginning energy coming in um, in the third week. So we've got Page of Swords and the Ace of Cups. Now Page of Swords admittedly is not a tender card, but the Ace of Cups most certainly is. And one of the things that this makes me feel for you, Leo, is that the Page of Swords can represent the mind, right, and communication, and the Ace of Cups is heartfelt energy. So you could be having like a, a heartfelt new idea or a heartfelt conversation with someone that results in something more positive than you are expecting. I also see the potential combination of these energies in the third week of July as a kind of precursor for some kind of personal revolution that you are going to be going through over the next, I would say, five to six months. This is like the very beginning of it. And so this could take you to totally unexpected places. And I encourage you to explore whatever this is because I feel like you're coming to some kind of new conclusion. And at first with the Page of Swords, you could be uncertain about it because the page of swords is like the beginning factor of something it's the first onset of a new idea it's the first onset of a new inspiration um but i think with the ace of cups like your heart is absolutely in this so you know maybe for some of you this is the beginning of a particular training like you could be learning reiki or you could be um joining some kind of online class or doing some kind of um home study schooling program that you are new to but you're really excited about it with the ace of cups and it represents this potential for great healing within you because we have the dove of spirit going downward into the cup so it's like a spiritual healing taking place through you kind of pursuing something that you're excited about now at the end of july we have the seven of swords and the seven of cups so and that's interesting because that's when the sun ingresses into your sign. You will have your birthday season starting if you are a Leo sun. Um, but you will also, you know, whatever you, whatever else you have in Leo is going to be contacted by the sun. So it'll be pretty significant. Um, you know, I think this is really talking about assessing your goals for the next year with these two sevens. Um, Sevens are about assessment. They're about kind of looking at what we have access to, what we have available to us. And they're kind of about like deciding once we've seen what we have going on. It's about kind of deciding where to put our focus. You know, there are seven sacred um, original planets. We have seven chakra centers in the body. Seven is like, a, it's a number of wholeness. And, but when we look at seven this way, it's representing like seeing the whole picture and then 
looking at how we want to use this instrument, like this biological instrument that we have of the body, let's say, for example, in the condition of the chakras, like once we have them aligned, once we have, you know, our energy centers quite um, running smoothly, it becomes about like, all right, well, what do we want to do with that? Like, what do we want to do if we have our health, if we have, you know, enough um, resources to be able to put our time and energy into something that we would choose for ourselves? If we are blessed enough to find ourselves in that situation, what do we really want to do? <laughs> um, and that can be kind of like a scary question for people. So one of the things I want to say with these two cards is like, you're going to be on, like, there's going to be a process of discovery, I think, as Leo season begins for you, where you want to become very in touch with what you genuinely feel and what you really want. Um, and getting that clarity within yourself is super important because it's likely going to be different than what you wanted six months ago or even three months ago. Your point of desire is going to have changed. So I think it's about not really about imposing goals on yourself, but it's about really going deep within and asking yourself, like, what do I really want or what do I really feel? Um, just check in is super important. So do some journaling in that um, last week of July. So we've got um, Bob Ross. Bob Ross' message is, they say everything looks better with odd numbers of things, but sometimes I put even numbers just to accept, upset the critics. <laughs> so I love this. And I think it kind of adds a new depth to what we've already seen in your cards. Some of this energy with the Five of Pentacles for some of you might be about going against the grain in some way because this is a card of people feeling like they're on the outside of an establishment, right? Like they're outside of the church. They're no longer part of the church, so they have to walk away from the church. Um, and the church in the old world, I feel, kind of represents a dominant ideology, it represents a narrative that you're not allowed to disagree with, right? Back in the day, if you disagreed with the church, you could potentially be burned at the stake for that. Um, so there's a lot of control and a lot of institutionalized sort of demand that, you know, um, of acquiescence, right? So one of the things that I see here now with the Bob Ross message is that it feels like maybe for some of you, you are considering going against something that feels very mainstream. Um, and you might feel on some level that you will be alone in that process. And you probably will. Um, not to say that in a bad way at, or anything like that, but sometimes when we are just following our truth and we're thinking for ourselves, um, that means that we might not we might not have a lot of other people to share that space with because they may not be at that point yet in their personal growth or, you know, they might not be in that place at all. And that might not ever be where they go, you know, the people close to you. So it's kind of about recognizing that sometimes following your own path um, and doing your own thing in life does mean that we leave behind some of the things that would be more comforting but the rewards are so much greater because we get to live in our truth, right? Um, and a lot of times those things do come full circle. I'll say that, Leo. So just be really gentle on yourself. If you are feeling um, disenfranchised in any way in the beginning of the month, because ultimately if you can take this kind of playful, like, um, devil may care kind of attitude like oh yeah you guys would really like it if I like <laughs> just did this this and that but you know I'm just gonna throw a couple extra trees on there just to upset the critics you know it's kind of like a jokey like um, uh, what's the word a light-hearted approach and so often spirituality is true spirituality is about having a light heart it's not about taking everything so seriously so um, Maybe that's a little message for you too. Wow, so I got you guys a surrender card and the message is surrender resentments. I'll read it to you. 
It says, holding on to resentment only poisons you. Try to forgive others for their shortcomings and keep moving forward towards positive situations in your life. Beautiful. All right, Leo, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for um, watching this video. Please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear from you guys. Um, thank you so much just for being on my channel. I'm sending you so much love and abundance and wishes for your prosperity and success this month and beyond. Um, if you want to let me know that you're still with me, just leave me a little lion emoji because you guys got a little lion today. Or you can just write lion <laughs> or roar. <laughs> roar like your Leo self. Um, I would absolutely love to get that um, message from you. It always feels like a little high five. Of course, you can choose to donate to this channel if you'd like. Um, any amount is wonderful. I'll put the link below. You can also um, check out my affiliate links through Amazon if you like any of the decks I've used today. I'm also going to link some of my favorite decks um, down below. So if you want to support my channel and you're in the market for a new deck, <laughs> definitely check below. I have some links to some goodies. And of course, you know, because those are affiliate links, it will help support the hours that I put into this channel. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here. Oh, and I forgot really quickly, there is a money workshop that I'm holding for healers and creators. I will be putting that information and the link to join below. Okay, guys, sending you tons of love. Thank you so much for being here, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.